These surgeons are gifted. These uh, interventionalists have an understanding of anatomy. And I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to just briefly mention some of the things that Doug said that were in the middle of conversation and might have gone right by, but they are huge pearls. And one of them is the capacity to visualize anatomy. So when we look at um, some of the uh, x-rays that, let's see if this is going to work. It is. OK. The capacity to visualize anatomy. So what Doug was mentioning to you is, up here is big red and big blue. Uh, approaching here, you see from, the, from this axial view. But when you look at it from the sagittal view, there's a nerve below the pedicle. There's an empty space above the pedicle. And that's his superior extrapedicular approach. But you have to be able to see those. And you have to be able to visualize where you are headed, because your target is right up front. And if you can visualize that in 3D, you are much safer in executing what you do. So learning to see your Frank Netter anatomy or your cross-sectional atlas, be able to see that in your mind as you look at the x-ray, and the x-ray, see where the vertebral artery is. It's always at the waist, like a woman's girdle. It's always in that waist, that valley. And so you can avoid it. Where is the nerve? You can avoid the nerve. It's always in the inferior medial border of the pedicle. And as you do your trajectories visually, you're seeing the anatomy as you go through. And in doing that, you stay entirely safe. So I'm going to work through. Um, Particular transpedicular approach. We as surgeons use this tunnel, intraosseous tunnel, because we're protected with cortical bone on the outside and cortical bone on the inside. And if you approach the trajectory from the saddle of the transverse process, you'll drop right into the center of the vertebral body. So on your lateral, you'll see the tip of this in the anterior third. And on your AP, it will be right underneath the spinous process because you're looking at that owl eye AP, where there are two eyes and a nose, and you're putting the guide wires right to the lateral, lateral aspect of the spinous process, or right in the center of the vertebral body. And keeping mindful of the two eyes and a nose, you can anticipate, where do I have to approach this? If it collapses from above, superior end plate is collapsed, you have to start a high and outside trajectory. If the collapse is below or the collapse is vertebra plana, you have to be very precise because you're entering into a smaller space as you get to the front. So you're going to the tip of a cone. So you've got to be dead center. And being able to sit out on the transverse process and dock to aim in whichever direction you wish to aim allows you to reach the goal on both sides. Keeping the orthogonal x-ray in front of you gives you your three-dimensional understanding. So don't accept inferior x-rays. Spend your time getting perfect AP and lateral. One of the views that we're going to see is the wire view that Doug was mentioning. The most narrow aspect of the pedicle is, again, at the waist, right here. The vertebral artery goes in the base of the valley, right there. And once you understand the anatomy in true AP lateral, you always know where you're safe. And you always know where tiger country is, and you can avoid it. So when you're looking at a pedicle, it flares out like an open funnel as you get toward the vertebral body. So if you are directly underneath the medial border of the pedicle, Simul on AP, simultaneous with being at the posterior longitudinal ligament on the lateral, you're safely within bone because this flares out caudally and rostrally and medially and laterally. So if you are here at the same time you are here in your biplanar fluoroscopy, you're perfectly safe and you're headed for the, the target. So keep your x-rays orthogonal. What you're looking for is to get into the anterior central third of the vertebral body. You can calculate your trajectories 
but you also must be mindful of your depth because on the lateral, you won't see this as being too far. It'll look perfectly gorgeous to you. But your AP shows it's not next to the spinous process. It's lateral of it. And you know that the curve of the vertebral body means your guide wire is exiting. And in this particular view, it's exiting right at the mid, which is where the waist of the vertebral body is. So you're exiting next to the vertebral artery that's branching off the aorta at that level. Alarm bells <laughs> should go off because you haven't put the tip under the spinous process. And that was the trajectory comment that Doug was making about pedicular, transpedicular, extrapedicular approaches. You want the trajectory to put the tip in a safe place in the vertebral body. And you simply change this starting point to accomplish that end. Now here's that wire showing the waist of the pedicle being the most narrow part of the pedicle. And the reason you see it on the AP is the cortical bone at that level is more dense because you're seeing it on the x-ray. And higher than that, the cortical bone is flaring out of plane of the x-ray. So you see the, the owl eye at the middle on the AP. And so you know when you're passing your guide wires that when you are at this point, you must be at this point to be safe. And if not, then you realign. And that's where orthogonal x-rays keep you safe and keep you accurate. So here are the orthogonal x-rays. So when you're looking at it, the characteristics are the top of the pedicle, the owl eyes, have to be at the eyebrow, the superior end plane. And if the uh, vertebral body or the x-ray plane is misaligned, the pedicle will either be down here or the pedicle will be up here. So you have to get the owl eyes aligned with the end plates for the level that you are working on. And if you're working in complex deformity that is curving in three dimensions, and we'll look at some of those today, you have to be particularly meticulous. Sometimes it's challenging, and one of the ways that you can help yourself is eliminate the counting, because you, don't, you, do, you want to avoid wrong site surgery. And if you don't have good visualization, you want to put landmarks in the field. So let's say you're doing thoracolumbar work, and uh, you want to make sure that T11 is your site, and it's a scoliotic curve. When you're working your way up from the pelvis, put an 18 gauge down on the pedicle of L2. And then as you walk your way up from L2 to the fracture level, you can always reassure yourself of the count. You can't see the sacrum, but you see a marker that got you away from the sacrum. And you use that marker to make sure that you're now at the level. And then once you're at the level that you're supposed to treat, mark it because the curve will very easily, or the radiology tech will very easily lose sight of where you are. And it's very easy to come back and look at another osteoporotic vertebral body that looks a lot like the fracture level, but understandably it's one above or one below. So when you're in complex situations, give yourself landmarks that you can always refer back to and start your count over and double check that you're at the right level. It's a it's a, a, a sadness to treat the wrong level. Then the landmarks here, what's being highlighted here is the junction between the transverse process and the lateral border of the pedicle. So as the jam sheety is coursing from the lateral border of the pedicle to the medial border of the pedicle on AP, it must simultaneously be reaching the posterior longitudinal <coughs> ligament level on the lateral. And when that occurs, the guide wire will go to the center center aspect of the vertebral body uh, on the lateral aspect of the spinous process every time. And it doesn't matter if there's a scoliosis curve there, because you've got that bone in perfect orthogonal alignment. So set your 
Well, like Doug was saying, he, he also hit it on this. Your eyes are oriented to perpendiculars. The floor is perfectly horizontal. Every single window, every single door jam, every single cap in this room is perfectly perpendicular to the floor. So you set the fluoroscope to the floor and you turn the patient to the fluoroscope so that the level you're working on is perfectly orthogonal in AP lateral independent of where the curve of the scoliosis or the collapse of the deformity occurs. And if you can't see it at the vertebral body you're working on, get it to the level above and get it to the level below. So in your lateral, make sure your end plates, superior and inferior end plates, are perfectly lined up because the level you might be working on might be destroyed by dances, might be destroyed by burst fracture, might be so osteoporotic you can't see it. Use your landmarks in AP lateral, get the spinous process dead center at that level, and you'll be able to hit your target every time. So there's the end plates we discussed, there's the spinous process, and so when you're looking for this, if you see this owl eye picture and this lateral with the pedicles lined up, not double view of double wall laterals. You want the laterals perfectly lined up. Then you're, you're safe, and your brain will work in three dimension uh, according to the floor and the, the, the vertical lines of the walls, and, and you'll be able to reference trajectory perfectly. If you allow the patient to be rotated and you have to compensate, the errors in placement will occur. Uh, I'm going to go by that. That's a, another level of, um, this is what the pedicle screw docks, um, this is what we do when we're uh, putting in pedicle screws. And then last, lastly, Doug's notion, uh, he says stuff and it's incredibly impactful. Uh, skirting the superior border, the dorsal border of the rib protects you from the canal and from the vessels. So you, using the superior border of the rib as it turns into the costa vertebral and costa transverse joints as a skid guide lets you get directly into the center of the vertebral body. So in the thoracic spine, that's usually impactful. In the lumbar spine, the transpedicular approach is so helpful because these pedicles are they're as big as chimney pipes, they're, they're, and they're intraosseous, so you're safe all the way through. Uh, using the extrapedicular approach at the thoracolumbar junction is particularly helpful when the patient's anatomy narrows dramatically, and the pedicles of T12, L1, L2 are remarkably more narrow consistently across the population than they are higher up in the thoracic spine and lower down in the lumbar spine. So the thoracolumbar junction, the transpedicular approach is a little more difficult and more confining because the pedicles can be very narrow slits. And let me see if I can show you one of those. So when you're doing uh, your trajectory planning, remember I told you high and outside or low, depending upon whether you're trying to get into collapses that are of superior end plate or inferior end plate. If you have the orthogonal x-rays, you'll be able to hit that perfectly. And this is a good one here, because this is a thoracal lumbar. And you see that the, the volume of this pedicle is substantially larger than this. So this is likely a, a L1 a vertebral body. The pedicle is, is really a slit. And using an expedicular approach there can be hugely helpful. And again, reaching the medial border of the pedicle on AP simultaneous with reaching the posterior longitudinal ligament level on the lateral confirms that you're anatomically intraosseous in the pedicle and safe. And you want that view for uh, every one of your uh, levels that are being treated. And I think, <coughs> yes, that, that shows it precisely. Posterior longitudinal ligament level on the lateral, medial border of the pedicle on the AP, targeted to the center of the spinous process in the anterior third of the vertebral body. So using those guideposts as you walk your way down improves your accuracy and uh, likelihood of success. 
So um, I will now, I think, the, the points I've made are, are sufficient. Uh, this is really what happens if you use the proper trajectory. These balloons always end up in the anterior third and then expand posteriorly. And here, uh, the PLL is right here. So in my practice, if the cement approaches and enters the posterior third of the vertebral body, I slow down. In, I've only had to remove cement in one patient in what? 15 years, 10, 10, 15 years. And that's because if it gets close, I, I slow down. And I thermally cure my cement to the viscosity of thickened toothpaste. So when it goes in, it's already a little too thick to wander off the reservation. So we, we keep the cement where it's supposed to be. 